Hello and welcome to your very first video lesson for your Cambridge IGCSE and O-Level Literature in English course. So thank you very much for coming and we will cover the introduction to the course, units one and two in the course book, as well as unit three, which is the introduction to poetry in this video. So you will need two things in order to follow this course. Number one is your set of books. We have here the course book. I will leave a link for the course book, the official course book in the description box. So if you don't have it already, please make sure that you order it. And then going along with that is the workbook. Okay. Sorry about the light reflection in there. It is quite dreary out right now here in the Netherlands, so I don't have a lot of natural sunlight. So those two books are absolutely required. There are also official books that have the required text that you need for the exams that these this course prepares you for. Um, but you can generally find most of that online for free. But I do recommend, if you can afford it, to buy the official um, compilation books, so where they have all of the texts that you would need together in one book. Um, if you can afford that, that would be great for you. If not, please make sure to search online to make sure you have copies of all of the required texts. Some of the poems or uh, short stories are in the course book and the workbook, but not all of them. So be sure that you have everything that you need. I will also link the syllabus that has all of the required reading texts for these exams and this course listed on there. So besides the books, the course book and the workbook, you also need to make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, International Yankee English. I do have a playlist where I will collect all of these video lessons and I will do some additional live streams where I answer your questions. And I will also include some other official videos or useful resources that other teachers in the past have made for this type of a course on these texts so that you have everything in one place. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for the notifications so you can be notified every time I add a new video. Let's get into today's topic. This is unit one, two, and three of your course book. So make sure you get your course book out. That is here. And we will start in part one, unit one. So you will see at the beginning the part one introduction. That is page one of your book. And then you open it and you go to page two. So make sure you see this page here. And I'm going to go through just some of the main points of this. So unit one is called how to get the most out of this course book. It is important that you don't just dive right into the text and the poems themselves, but that you actively make a study plan and that you understand how to apply active learning so that you don't just know the content, but that you understand how you can give your own personal responses and how you can analyze the literature that you read. Because your exams, your O-level, or IGCSE level exams from Cambridge, if you're doing those, they do not expect you just to regurgitate, give back the information that you have read, but they expect that you can develop your own personal critical response and analysis to the different pieces of literature that you read. So it is important that you develop these skills in this course. You're not simply learning what these different uh, poems or short novels or um, long novels are about, you are also understanding the different themes and how you can reflect and assess everything you read and how you can share that information and make that clear to the person who is reading your exam. So on page one, uh, unit 1.1, that is called Why Study Literature? I hope that this is obvious for you already, but literature or texts 
are a means in a way that uh, writers can share their experiences with others and we can make sense of the world through literature. I'm going to point out that you have throughout all of the units these little green boxes here where it says key term. Okay, the first key term is text. What do I mean every time that I say text? In this course, that can refer to a poem, a short story, a novel, or a play. There are other types of texts, such as letters uh, from one historical figure to another, academic articles, newspaper articles, and so on and so forth. Those can be referred to as texts as well, but a text in this context is referring to poem, short story, novel, or a play. So keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to unit 1.2, how will this course book help you? So as I've already stated, it is important that you learn how to give personal responses to the text that you have just read. So it is not simply summarizing and giving the information back, but you have to have your own personal response. Through the exercises and activities in this course, you will learn to build your confidence and to gain a better understanding of how you can do this for your exams. Okay, so moving on to unit 1.3 on page three, this talks about the structure of the book. Um, you have six main parts and I'm just going to read them through quickly. You can also pause the video and look at the next two pages yourself and then play it again. Um, part one has units one and two. We will cover those today about how to use your course book and um, how you should approach this course. I also have to, um, created a one minute introduction to the course course and your teacher video. So please be sure to look for that in the playlist as well on my channel. Um, and then part two is all about poetry. So building your skills, understanding poetry. Poetry includes units three through six. We will include unit three, the introduction to poetry in this video. And then the next video lesson will be units four, five, and six. Moving on to part three, that is about prose. So video lesson three will be a bit more dense. We will cover more units. We will have units seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 as we talk about what prose is and we talk about responding to prose, analyzing it, understanding it, and so on and so forth. Then we have part four, which is about drama. So the units that cover part four are units 12, 13, 14, and 15. That will be video lesson four. Part five is talking all about how to consolidate your writing skills and how to write. That will cover units 16 and 17. I also have additional videos on writing that I may refer you guys to. And then in part six, it is about preparing for your assessment and reviewing all of the material that we have covered in this course. So that covers units 18, 19, and 20, and then also includes some review on the rest of the course. Let's move on to unit 1.4 on page four of your course book. That looks like this. This unit is called active learning. It is extremely important that you take the wheel and that you control where your learning goes in this course. You cannot passively learn for this course. Since there is no right or wrong answer, it is all about the understanding and the personal view and analysis. The answers that you give on this type of an exam are very subjective. So you have to make sure that you really know and understand how to respond to literature. So if you forget everything that I say in this video, except for one thing, remember this, you are responsible for your learning. You have to make sure that you take charge and you do all of the active learning tips that I'm about to give you. Tip number one, make sure that you read the text associated to a certain unit before you watch the video lesson or complete the exercises from that part of the course. It is really important that you do this. Tip number two, once you've read the text, you've watched the video lesson and reviewed all of the different materials in your course book and your workbook uh, or supplementary learning materials that I or somebody else has given you for that part of the course, 
go back, reread the texts and revise them, review them, make notes, read them more carefully. See if you still understand them the same way as you understood them the first time or if your view has changed on it. And make notes on this. Make sure you really understand this. And be sure to go back to the parts that you had difficulty understanding at this stage. Go back, read the sections that were complicated or confusing, and try to understand them now that you have the additional information from doing activities in the workbook and watching the video lesson, and possibly also after you have watched a live stream with me and where I have answered some questions of um, that you have submitted or that other students have submitted. Moving on to page five, tip number three. Read with a dictionary nearby. So I don't necessarily suggest that you have a, a dictionary that is from your mother tongue to English and English to your mother tongue. It is better, um, whether you are a native speaker or not, that you use an English to English dictionary. You can also have as secondary information a translation to your first language, but it is always, always, always better to try to understand it in English, in an English context. So this can be a dictionary that you have a hard copy of, or it can be an online one. I will link a list of different uh, options that you guys can use online, as well as different dictionaries that are useful for you to purchase, but you are welcome to use whichever one you feel comfortable with. I always recommend using the same one though, or the same two if you're using English to English and um, one that translates to your native language because it is important that you have consistency in the information that you are receiving. Tip number four, be an active reader. It helps if you are really making sure that you are in a comfortable setting, so you're in a comfortable chair with good lighting, that you're not reading late at night or in a moment where you are tired, hungry, distracted, and that you take notes while you read. And it is always recommended that you also read at least short poems or certain stretches of text out loud because you can process the information that you are reading so much better. It is also important if you notice yourself getting lost in the text that you go back and start over from a certain point. You can also look at reading four lines at a time, take a break, close your eyes, think if you, about whether you understood it and read that part again before you move on to the next section. Another tip is that you can simply scan the text, skim it, so look through it quickly, try to get an essence of what it is about and read it maybe in your head first and then read through it word for word, including out loud. Those are some different ways that you can actively read in addition to taking notes as you read. Just be careful that you don't get too detailed or complicated in this because it may take you then an extremely long time to get through it and then you will get demotivated and you will stop studying or learning. So make sure to find the right balance for you, but don't simply read it quickly while you're thinking about rainbows and butterflies or what you want to watch on TV later or when you're thinking about anything else and then just throw it to the side when you're done. You have to be present and you have to read actively to understand this level of literature. You are reading a lot in this course, so it is extremely important that you find a note-taking system that works for you. I will include some different videos on how to take notes in this playlist to help you out. Um, you need to take notes because you will be reading a lot and it is not possible to keep everything in your head when you've simply read it once. So you need to try to process it and take notes along the way so that once you've read further, that you can go back to the text that you read earlier, maybe a month ago or so, and you can see the notes and that will jog your memory and it will be much easier for you to remember the essence and the main ideas of those texts when you go back to it later. Moving on to tip number five, that kind of goes hand in hand with the note taking, and that is to annotate. So you will notice here that there is the key term on page five, the green box is about, it is about annotating. What is an annotation? That is when you take notes that provide 
brief explanations of what you have read. So find keywords or use a mind map or something along those lines rather than writing a whole paragraph about what you've just read because you're not going to be able to pick out the main ideas and remember all of the information if your notes are too long. So again, make sure to check out the videos that I include about annotating and taking notes. Um, when it comes to note taking and being an active learner, there are so many different key terms, these green boxes that I keep pointing out to you guys. You need to use the proper terminology in your exams and it will also help you understand what we are talking about both in the books and in video lessons. So it is important that you start your own vocabulary list, whether it's on paper or in Excel or somewhere online where you include um, all of these words with your own definition or with the book's definition, but keep it short. I purposely do not provide this list of key terms to the students because that promotes passive learning instead of active learning. You will learn so much more if you actively do it yourself. I may provide, please leave a comment below if you would like this, if you're struggling, I may provide a list of key terms, but then leave an empty spot for definition and extra notes that you have to fill in yourself. And also, I think it is better that you find the page numbers yourself as well. You can know that they would be all the green ones. So if you need that help with a template or um, layout, let me know in the comment section and I will do that just with the key terms and then you can add additional key terms and your own definition and additional notes to that. Tip number six is to read secondary sources as well as the primary sources. So a primary source is the original text that you need to read for the course. So a poem by a certain author, for example. Um, but there are also tons and tons and tons of resources available online for free. Um, I will also include some links to some additional uh, resources for you guys. And you can definitely make use of these different types of study guides or notes or summaries that other people have made over the years. Um, that will help you gain a deeper understanding or make it easier for you to understand what you are reading. However, this is not a replacement for reading the text yourself, the original text, and also developing your own personal response and reflection. The people who are grading these exams and assessments will know if you are simply repeating what is in a study guide online. So it is important that you only use that as a means to understand the primary text not to replace the primary text. And the last one I kind of used already, I already said it, and that is to read your text out loud. It is really helpful when you actually speak the information that you are receiving, that you are reading. It helps you try uh, to find these different things that are important in literature, such as rhyme um, or rhythm or alliteration. Simile, these different things are extremely important in literature and they are much easier to find, especially for non-native speakers, when you read them out loud. So that is important and a good tip for you guys to make sure you don't forget. Okay, moving on to unit two that starts on page six of your course book. It is about approaching your course. It talks about the aims and objectives of this course. If you are a student enrolled with an official online course with me, you will find that in the online area and you can look through that and let me know if you have any questions. Um, it doesn't make sense for me to really make any additional comments on that section in this video lesson. So if you have any questions, write them below in the comment section and I will be sure to answer them there. And we will now move on to unit three. Okay, so unit three begins on page 12, and this is your introduction to poetry. So the learning outcomes for this unit are as follows. Communicate an overview of the literary form poetry. Explain the key skills you need for responding sensitively to poems you read. And the last one. Understand the importance of an active learning approach to studying poetry. Okay, so the first section asks the question, what is poetry? And it answers it as well. You will see your first key term from this unit is alliteration. We will talk about that in a moment. So poetry can take all different kinds of shapes and forms and sizes. Children are introduced to forms of poetry at a very young age through the form of nursery rhymes. 
So for example, one of my favorites as a child was the Itsy Bitsy Spider. I believe in the UK they say the Insy Wincy, and in the US we say Itsy Bitsy. So it goes, the Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Up came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the spout again. So you will notice some different techniques that we use in poetry as well in that nursery rhyme. So in the nursery rhyme, we have itsy and bitsy, we have spout and out, and we also have repetition of the phrase itsy and bitsy. Now let's take a look at another nursery rhyme that was popular when I was a child. It was called Miss Mary Mac, and it goes like this. Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black, black, black. I will stop there. So some of the common poetic techniques that are in that rhyme are rhyme, Miss Mary Mac, all dressed in black, and then it goes with silver buttons down her back, and it co continues with rhyme throughout, as well as repetition. It mentions Miss Mary Mac, 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 and then also alliteration. That is when several words together or in a short span of each other use the same sound at the beginning. So here we have the M sound repeated. Miss Mary Mac. Okay, that is it. a good example of a rhyme that uses three very common poetic devices. There are many different things that you will encounter in your day-to-day -day life that engages these poetic techniques as well. Some other examples are newspaper articles, songs, lyrics to your favorite songs, advertisements on TV or online or in newspapers, or even at a place of worship in a church or at a temple when you are reading scripture or singing hymns or religious songs of some sort. What's important to remember about poetry is that most people will not understand the main deep meaning of a poem right the first time when they read it. You usually need to reread the poem a few times before you truly understand what the poem is trying to say and what types of feelings it is trying to elicit within you. One important thing to remember is there is never a correct or official way of saying this poem is about this. There is no official or correct right meaning to a poem. Even if the author has stated this poem is meant to do this, this is the official meaning. Even if the author states that, it is important to remember that your personal analysis and feelings and review of the words that you have just read is just as valid as the author's words. So it is important to be able to recognize the poetic devices, but also to be able to have a personal reflection and analysis of the words that you have read. You will be developing these skills throughout units 3, 4, 5, and 6 of this book. Let's move on to page 13. You have two more key terms in the little green box there, rhythm and aesthetic. So I recommend that you pause the video, take a quick look at those, and then keep watching. The next section is defining poetry. What is poetry? It is extremely difficult to say exactly what poetry is. There is definitely a subjective view of this idea. It can take very different shapes and sizes and forms. Here are some ideas of what poetry is. A collection of ideas and feelings that are written with intensity. Use of a distinct style. A purposeful use of rhythm written to reinforce key meanings. An elevated art form that is meant to use aesthetic qualities and a form of writing that is designed to be heard as well as read. Now let's look at poetry throughout the ages. Around 1000 BC, the first official English poem was written. It was a very long form and it was in Old English and it was called Beowulf. This was about a Scandinavian hero, a Viking of some kind, and he was basically um, fighting um, different dragons and knights, and there was all kinds of magic and things like that. Some other notable early forms of poetry in English are the 14th century works Sir Gawain and the Green Knights and the Canterbury Tales. Anything concerning King Arthur and the Round Table would be constituted as Old English and 
early English poetry. Let's move on to unit 3.1, topics for poems on page 14. There is no set list of topics that you can cover in poetry. You are welcome to talk about anything you want when you write about a poem. Generally, there is a rich, wide range of topics that are covered in poetry. Some common and popular topics are as follows. Stages of life, such as adolescence or becoming of age. Other common uh, stages of life are old age, getting married, having a child, being born or dying. Relationships, personal um, as well as business um, or love, a husband and wife, a wife and wife, a husband and husband, or a summer love, or your first love, your first kiss, um, or about the love between family members, or a mother and daughter, a father and daughter, or son, and all the different types of relationships and love, and the different complicated feelings that come along with those life experiences. Those are all very popular topics for poems. War and injustice, or what is right, what is wrong, good and evil, those are popular topics as well. Common society or societal issues, um, different things uh, such as um, uh, racial injustice, for example, or about cultural norms and values and how life can be different in different places of the world. About the environment and nature, so um, mother nature and about the power and beauty of nature as well as the human impact on the environment. And also about uh, future generations, um, what is to come uh, to become of the world, what will future generations look like, um, as well as simply the meaning of life. Those are some common topics that you will find in the poems that you read in this course or anywhere really. Let's move on to page 15, unit 3.2. Here we talk about how you can develop the skills that you need to read and understand poetry. In addition to reading and understanding the poetry that you read, you need to be able to respond to it. If you cannot personally respond, you will not be able to pass the exams for this course and you will not be able to thoroughly enjoy the poetry either. For each poem, there are activities that we have for you in the workbook. Make sure that you always read the instructions to the activities carefully and that you read the poems carefully before you start the activity. Be sure to read the poems out loud and to emphasize each word as you read them because you will notice that there may be something missing if you are reading in your head. It is also important to read within the stanzas so that is a group of lines because often the every second or third perhaps a line in a stanza will rhyme or connect back to a line that you had read a couple of lines ago. So you want to make sure that you check carefully to the structure and the format of the poem that you are reading and see those stanzas as set chunks of the poem that you are reading. Reading in this way will help you feel and understand the rhythm of the poem. Let's move on to page 16 now. You will see there is a key term there, sorry, three key terms, metaphor, sonnet, and personification. So pause the video and read those, then press play again. Okay, the first part here is analyzing the way poets use language and structure. So it is important not to simply look at the words that are being used, but also the structure in which the words are presented, as well as the stanzas, and how each section of the poem relates to the other sections. The next part is about using proper terminology when responding to poetry. Often you use metaphors where you are not simply using a word comparing something and it's not, it is not as straightforward as a simple comparison. This you will learn to develop and understand and recognize through the activities that we do in this book. A sonnet is a poem of 14 lines and each line has 10 syllables. So it is very specific in its form and you will have to remember that if you want to recognize that a poem is a sonnet. And personification is when an inanimate object, something that is not a human, is given features or characteristics of a human. It is never enough to just say that a writer made use of personification, or this poem is a sonnet, or there are many different examples of metaphors in this poem. Why is that not enough? Well, why did the poet choose to include these different details? Why did they use these forms? What do you think was the main reason? How do you think it could have changed the meaning if they had done X, Y, or Z instead? What types of feelings and emotions are elicited when you read it in this way? 
So really getting into the details and understanding the idea and vision of the writer, the poet, is extremely important when you respond to and analyze poetry. So let's look at the last section on this page about gaining confidence in writing your own personal responses. So as I've already mentioned, you will not get credit if you simply repeat or regurgitate information from your teacher and or from study guides. You need to have your own personal response to a poem and these people who look at your exams are very well trained. They know this literature like the back of their hand. That's a saying that means they know it very well. So you will not be able to fool them. Don't even bother. Try learning and understanding these concepts and coming up with your own personal response to each and every one of them. You will learn more about this in unit six where you will learn the following things. How to ask the right questions when you are reading poetry on your own. How to explore the impact of the choice of words the poet has used on your own life and your own personal perception of the poem. And lastly, how to use evidence or words from the poems to support your own views. Okay guys, moving on to unit 3.3 on page 17 of your book. This is something that I have already said many, many times. And this is about the importance of learning active learning. Set out to read a poem, you should always have your dictionary close by and whichever format you choose to take notes. So for example, if you look at my book, I am a big fan of highlighting. I like to highlight important sections that I can go back to and draw my eyes right away to the important themes or topics. Um, when I was a student, I also often took small notes, so just keywords of important topics within the book if I owned the book. And if not, I would always have a notebook and I would write it down on a piece of paper. Um, as um, I got older and it got, um, it was more accessible for me to use my laptop, I also would take notes online. I will say that many scientific studies prove that taking notes by hand is much more effective and you can learn a lot more and remember the information that you write when you write by hand much more easily than if you type them on a computer. But that is up to personal preference, of course. It is important to understand when you are using the dictionary to help you understand your the words that you are reading, the words that you don't understand, that many of the words in the older poems especially are considered archaic. If you don't know what archaic means, press pause and look at the key term box on this page. So many of the words that you will find in poetry have fallen out of use and you will not have ever heard before, or they are simply words that are not used as often in English today. So you will need to look up several different words. Um, please note that poetry does not translate well between languages, so from one language to another. That is because every language has its own unique style and um, different nuances to it. So definitely use an English to English dictionary when you are trying to understand the words that you don't know already. If you translate to your native language, you will have a lot of difficulty understanding the proper meaning of the words the poet has written. And then it makes note here on this page that units 4.6 will help you learn some different activities to take quicker and more effective notes. I will also include some note-taking videos in the playlist for this course. Um, you can make use of things such as lists, tables, and mind maps. Um, and it doesn't really matter which one you take. Take the things, the comments, and the ideas that you find useful and come up with your own method for effective note-taking and um, learning approach for this course. You must understand not only the surface meaning of the poems and the text that you read, but also the deeper meaning and how you can respond to them. So in order to do that, you need to be able, as you go along with the course and you read these texts, to come up with your own responses and find a system that works for you. Okay guys, so check your progress. If you are in an online course with me currently, then you should submit your answers to one of these activities. So there are three activities on page 18, which looks like this. And I wouldn't recommend doing all three. You can if you want, but definitely choose at least one and do it in depth. 
The first one is to search the internet for the lyrics of your favorite song. I do have in my Ednext uh, online course in the extra supplementary learning material folder a nice worksheet that will help you with this activity so check that one out. Um, you will, if you're in my private Facebook group, I will also include the worksheet there, the International Yankee English Facebook group, and I will include that in the writing units, um, so you can find it there as well. So search the internet for the lyrics of your favorite song or a song that you like, and um, check out which words and which lines strike you as being particularly poetic. Which ones seem like they have these these different terms, these key terms that we've discussed so far in this video. Do you see any rhyme or alliteration? Do you see or read any metaphors? Look at those things and then write down how you think these lines and these words convey the message of the song. Activity number two, write down as much detail as you can about a poem you remember reading. You might have liked or disliked the poem and that is why you remember it. If you can't remember the title of the poem or the name of the poet, then try to recall what the poem was about. Um, what did you find particularly memorable? Was it some aspect of the content or perhaps specific words or images that stuck out in your mind? Basically, why did you choose it? What made you choose that poem? And the third activity, look at the section in the book called Defining Poetry and rank the bullet points that they have listed there in order of importance. So I will leave that up to you to read. Um, and then once you have finished, uh, make sure that you um, write what it thinks about you, what you think about your own expectations and share your views and thoughts on the matter. And then at the bottom, the last page of this unit um, on page 18 is a self-evaluation checklist. You have some different skills, I think five, yeah, five different skills, and you should mark off how confident you are with it. If you're not confident with one of the skills, go back where it says look again and review that unit then. Okay, so you can read through them if you are comfortable um, talking about what poetry is, then you don't need to go back to 3.0, but perhaps you um, don't understand the key skills required for close reading. So then you would want to go back to where it says unit 3.2 and read that section again. Besides reading those three units, and if you are in a structured online course with me, uh, completing any exercises that are listed for this part, um, then you should also go to your workbook and you should start with pages two and three. Support for your study and the wider reading log. This will really help you gain a basic foundation for where you can start with your studies. Make note of the key terms in the workbook as well. Some of them may be the same as in the course book, but not all of them. So make sure you read those very carefully. I also recommend including these in a vocabulary list or highlighting or ma making some kind of accent, perhaps a sticker or some kind of um, way for you to find these key terms easily again. I also recommend at this stage completing pages four and five. Here you have an example of a mind map. So you can make use of this method when you are studying these texts and also the checklist for writing critical essays. Okay, at this point, I am going to share a presentation with you guys. I will go to uh, share my screen and we will go through a PowerPoint presentation that is um, was developed by Cambridge itself, where we go through some of the topics we've already talked about or that you may have seen in the book, but it is presented in a more condensed form. And then we will wrap up this very first video lesson. Okay guys, this is Unit 3, Introducing Poetry, the presentation from the official Cambridge publishers. Okay, so what are the main literary forms? Here's an example of poetry. You can pause this video and then press play and I will continue on the next slide for the rest of this poem. Here is the second part of that poem. The next literary form, which we will start to cover later in the course, is prose. Here is an example of prose. Please be sure to pause the video so you can read it at your own pace and then press play when you are done. Okay, the next form is drama. Here is the first part of this example. 
Here's the second part of the example of drama. Okay, next up is some definitions of poetry. First up, let me move my face. First up is ideas and feelings that are expressed with intensity. Poetry is normally intense and passionate. It is strong, it is not dry. Next is a use of a distinct style. We talked about this earlier. A purposeful use of rhythm that reinforces key meanings. An elevated art form that prizes aesthetic qualities. And lastly, a form of writing designed to be heard as well as read. Here are some key skills for exploring poetry. Read closely and carefully. Respond sensitively to meanings. Analyze the way poets use language and structure. Use appropriate terminology. And give an informed personal response. So poetry through the ages, let me move my head up. Here's an example of the old English poem, Beowulf. It is a short extract from the original poem, which is quite long. You can see on the one side, the original text in old English with a translation to modern day English. And I will um, just go ahead to the next slide. So please press pause so you can read this through at your own pace. Okay, now let's look at Middle English, and this is from uh, Chaucer's general prologue. Um, again, press pause and read through it at your own pace, please. Okay, guys, I have to keep making myself smaller because there is more and more information appearing on these slides. The next slide, Poetry Through the Ages, shows us modern English, When Forty Winters Shall Besiege Thy Brow, and that is by William Shakespeare. Yes, William Shakespeare, he is writing in modern English when you read these poems, not old or middle English. So uh, modern English can still vary and is always changing as well. Um, so make sure to press pause, try to read the uh, original text here, and then read the translation after that at your own pace. Okay guys, that was a summary of the uh, main ideas or topics that we discussed in today's video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you are in a structured course with me, please make sure to make use of the online area where you have questions for the teacher. Um, and also you can make use of the comment section here on YouTube as well. And I will answer all of the questions to the best of my ability. And um, please make sure to let me know if there is anything else that you would like included in the next video lesson, which you can expect in about a month's time. Okay guys, take care and uh, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel um, and make sure you know how to find and where to find the playlist for these video lessons. Take care and see you soon. Bye!